So a couple of things to get out of the way before I start this video. Um, I have a couple of what I'm going to call problems to give credence to those who want to hate on me for the things that I'm going to say. I have a beliefs about this game that people find disturbing and against core balance and stuff. Namely, that I don't like multi-weapon games as a whole once the number of options exceeds three because I have decision fatigue and it's just a personal problem. So I work within this game to the best of my abilities. Um, secondly, I play, I've played source mods a bit too much, so I prefer the methods that games like Team Fortress 2 Classic or Pre-Fortress 2 give where they balance out classes as best as possible with multiple weapons or just one set of weapons and Pre-Fortress 2 does it the best I think like giving Medic an Infection Syringe and a Super SMG giving Pyro Incendiary Rockets instead of Air Blast with a little um, blast radius and minor afterburn that isn't the same as the regular flamethrower um Scout has a nail gun and a shotgun instead of a scatter gun and a pistol, and it works pretty well. Um, but that's not really the point of this video. The point of this video is trying to figure out which weapons uh, should be given benefits or nerfs. And the problem with multi-weapon games that I have, personally, is that I give a lot of credence to doing the best I can with what I'm given. And... It takes a lot for me to discredit the use of an item in most practical situations because I only try to play the game very practically because that's how I have fun, if you want to call it that. Uh, so, um, starting with Scout, most all of these are good. I want a tighter spread on this and some kind of improvement on this. I don't know what, but it's a shame that the shortstop doesn't do very well because I enjoy using it. Um, these three pistols are perfect. I don't recommend drinks in general, and I like this paired with the Rap Assassin because it's a bleed scout and stuff, right? I don't like the drinks because it promotes a very niche play style that I don't play i wouldn't recommend it to new players or veteran players really because it's not practical to use and that's something that people would be like oh so you want to remove it outright like no i just don't use it and it's annoying to fight against because i don't use it because i don't have enough experience with it to understand how it works but that's a personal problem <laughs> For the most part, I see people complain online, and this video, by the way, is being made because I watched Zesty Jesus' reaction to um, a video made by, I think it was Grouchy, I don't know, um, about um, fixing all of TF2's bad weapons, uh, like buffing or nerfing them and stuff, and I agreed with Zesty almost everything because it was really, really badly made. Uh, only it, it seemed like a fan fiction of a video. And so I was just figuring I'd go through all of this because uh, it occurs to me that people base their beliefs on certain weapons entirely on personal problems and skill issues. And this is coming from a guy who's really bad at games nowadays because of um, damaged neural connections from a car crash. So take your pick on that uh like i personally believe that most of the nerfs valve ever administered to weapons were due to the social pressure of the youtube fan base and not the actual sorry not the actual player base uh because there are two distinctly different fan bases because tf2 is just one of those games that's a lot of fun to watch and also to play but it's more of a spectator sport than anything because it's more popular on youtube than it actually is in as far as player numbers right and you can watch any tf2 youtube video and understand that um 
And I, that's one of the reasons that I give in the upcoming mega video that I'm making uh, uh, for Valve eventually abandoning TF2 because it's this constant fight between two different um, fan bases that just don't mesh together. Um, and this is coming, obviously, from a kid who's been playing for like two years. Okay, so... Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but TF2 has always been fundamentally broken in a few situations, namely Pyro having Air Blast and not the original design of Incendiary Rockets. I, that was a really good idea, and seeing it actually play out is really well done, and I don't know why they scrapped it. Um, they got rid of the armor and grenade system from Team Fortress Classic, and that's fine. It's not as fun as Team Fortress Classic, but it's it's all right. Uh... I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I'm just a fan of nades. So I'm also one of those guys who, while I don't believe that TF2 should be Counter-Strike, I do think that the guns should function like actual guns and shotgun based weapons. So multi-bullet single shot hit scan weapons should function with some level of random spread because that's how guns actually work. And single shot hit scan weapons should have very little spread, if no spread at all. I don't want to promote pistol sniping, but I kind of do. Because at the very least, it would be a fundamentally better design choice the way I've played games to tighten the random bullet spread on single shot hit scan weapons particularly for spies revolver like all the revolvers and snipers smg because somehow that's worse than the pistols i don't know how or why but that's my takeaway from it it makes it a little more believable um also i think a lot of the nerfs that valve has given to certain weapons over time have been terrible decisions for the most part. For example, the Sandman um, should just be returned to the original state. Um, and here's the thing with multi-weapon games that give me all this decision fatigue, right? Um, it encourages creative play styles, and I really, really like that. Um, which is why I never really think that something should be nerfed just because you can do ridiculous things with it. I think it forces the other person to be creative as well in figuring out how to deal with it. It encourages skill and it should take a lot to discredit a weapon other than how it, other than you're just not good enough. And again, this is coming from a perspective of a player who isn't good enough. I'm never good enough. I have damaged neural connections in my brain from a car crash that makes me very bad at games in general. It's difficult to even play this game because there's so much going on. Um, I want the Sandman to return to its true glory, and I want the Sun on the Stick to receive an upgrade of some kind. Everything else is fine. Fan of War is cool. Rap Assassin is cool when paired with the Cleaver or the Guillotine. Uh, and yeah, Atomizer is still my favorite. Bat for Scout. Moving on to Soldier. Um, I love pretty much all of these. I would only give an upgrade to the Cow Mangler because it's... It's pretty good. I don't know why the damage to buildings is so low, considering that it's an electric weapon and it should deal more damage, kind of like an EMP thing. But I think it should be upgraded somehow. But the Cow Mangler is still a lot of fun to use um, subjectively. And objectively, it's really not as bad as people say. People are just more familiar with stock. If it wasn't for the the damage to buildings and the mini crits where it would normally crit which doesn't really matter that much to me i think because who's gonna crits krieg i'm a cow mangler right 
Um, if it wasn't for the damage to buildings, it would be on par with stock and the original because it's just really cool. The alt fire mechanic is really cool. Uh, four seconds is an odd timing though. Everything else is great. I like it. Liberty launcher is really fun. Airstrike is really fun paired with this thing, which also should return to its former glory. Uh, in fact, pretty much everything should return to its former glory if it has been nerfed by Valve in the past at some point. But that's just me, I guess. Though you can come at me all you want. I, I don't care. Uh, I'm always too tired to care. I don't play with the gunboats ever because I just don't enjoy losing out on a shotgun. And I don't play with banners much ever if I have the opportunity. I only play with the conch with a black box because it's the immortal soldier loadout. And it's useful. It's very useful in that regard with the speed boost. I don't enjoy the buff banner much. And I I use the battalion's backup only as a health boost when I use the direct hit. Because I'm terrible with hitting my shots. So, yeah. It kind of gives me a nice little extra bonus of health if I need to get out of a tight situation. Beggars is fun. And, yeah. Uh, man treads are pretty funny. Very, very niche. Obviously, there's the rocket jumper and stuff, which I... There, there, there are weapons that literally facilitate niche gameplay styles, which I don't understand the point of, but I guess TF2 was... Always one of those more generally acceptable games as a view of um, us. Oh, how, how would I put it? A different kind of fun? A more, a more studying physics engine type of fun? Which is really what the rocket jumper facilitates in a match. And sticky jumper is just a physics engine study. Um, reserve shooter is good. Panic attack is good. Did this one have a nerf as well? Let me look. Because I have everything uh, on the website right here. Um, panic attack. Was this thing ever better at one point? Uh, update history. The attributes were 34 faster, 34 percent faster reload time. Fire rate increases as health decreases. Holds up to four shells. Weapon spread increases as health decreases. Wow, that is a very different type of weapon from what I have today. That sounds way cooler. Like, way cooler. I Fire rate increases as health decreases. So it, it literally sticks with the name Panic Attack, where you actually are in a tight spot. You're actually panicking, and you're, you just... It, 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 it immerses you in this need to get out of a tight spot. Fire rate and weapon speed... Well, weapon spread increases. The spread is a little weird because that's just... That would just be seen as a design flaw of the gun itself, but that's probably negligible due to the fact that it's so immersive. Um, fix the crit, the crit boost material. <laughs> Holds, hold a fire to load up to four shells. Hmm. Uh, fixed being able to pick up buildings while reloading with the panic attack. Yeah, that's for engineer. Gun metal update. Changed attributes. Base fire rate increased from 15% to 30%. Base reload speed increased and added increased switch to speed. Yeah, that's pretty cool. No longer auto fires when fully loaded in December 2015. Da, 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 da. In 2017, they changed basically the entire thing to increase switch speed by 50%, increase number of pellets by 50%. Okay. Decreased damage by 30%. Yeah, 20% is a fine cut. 30% is too much. Pretty much bar none for any weapon. Fires a wide fixed shot pattern. Uh, I like the first idea better. Shot pattern grows with successive shot, but resets after the player stops firing or reloads. 
Okay, so the spread gets wider, but it has a fixed spread, so no random bullet spread. That's fine. I am not a fan of wep of random bullet spread um, as a principal concept, but if we're going for realism, then we want our shotguns to function realistically, right? Uh, reduced worst case shot pattern spread by 40% in 2018 and reduced damage penalty to 20% from 30%. Yep. I think the first version of the panic attack was better. I'll be honest. I kind of want that back. Um, the base jumper needs to be brought back to its former glory because it was you. It could be utilized so creatively, especially with the airstrike. Update history. Base jumper was added to the game. Uh, it doesn't say what the original stats were. I just know that you could tap space to deploy it and re uh, re reload it, as it were, like multiple times. And you were way more mobile in the air with your A and D keys. And they severely changed that. Yeah, reduced air control. Reduced amount of air control while deployed for by 50%. Removed the ability to redeploy the parachute once retracted until the player lands on the ground again. Undocumented. Fix the base jumper's bag disappearing after deployment. Now the bag correctly opens. Oh, so that's just an aesthetic change. Yeah, the, um, that's disappointing. I, I want... If we're going for creative play styles, then the base jumper should never have been changed. Righteous Bison, from what I've heard and seen, has always been bad, and it should just should have just been the way it was before. Uh, uh, update history is a little weird. Uh, meet your match update trashed it and then jungle inferno update trashed it again i just put it back to the way it was because it was always like bad quote unquote but it was it's still fun to use i still find it fun just not generally applicable uh melees for soldier are all fine the pain train in as, as far as i'm concerned is a direct upgrade from the shovel only because 10 percent bullet damage on wearer is negligible in most situations it just turns you into a big slow explosive scout which i think is kind of cool uh is there an update history on this thing not really it just uses equalizer sounds uh buh, 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 buh. let's see what else yeah, I think this is... Yeah, so that's fine. Pyro, I hate Air Blast. I think they should just go to Incendiary Rockets. They should have just kept that beta concept. But it, we can't change it now. Um, third degree, obviously, is the direct upgrade from stock. So now there's no reason to use a stock axe anymore. It's kind of stupid, but it is what it is. I'm not going to say anything about it. Primaries. Uh, this is just a reskin. This thing is really weird because I've been dominated by this weapon before and I don't know how to use it. But it works if you know how to use it, so I'm just going to say that, right? The degreaser is great, I think. The afterburn penalty is fine because I just equip this with the extinguisher and the panic attack. And it functions great. I like the phlogistonator. I like it a lot. And I'm glad that it has no air blast. I don't think anything should change about it. Back burner, perfect. I don't see anything wrong with it. Scorch shot, I don't see anything wrong with either. People complain about it. I don't really care. Maybe just remove the hit stun, I think is what people say. Uh, changed attributes. Reduced damage penalty from 50% to, to 35%. Oh, minus 50% to minus 35%. Interesting. Maybe they should put that back then if they want to appease people. Just bring it back to 50%. Uh, now has increased knockback on burning targets. Uh-huh. Increased the blast radius from flares. Hits and explosions always mini crit burning targets. Yeah, that's fine. Added a 35... <laughs> 
I just turned it into a uh, a slightly worse detonator. The detonator is fun. Detonator is a lot of fun. I don't see anything wrong with it. Same with the flare gun. Thermal thruster is just weird. Man melter is rough. Whatever mechanic this was going for should just be, this should just be an attempt to fix it. Gas passer is so meh. It shouldn't take so long for the gas to recharge. That's all I say. Um, melees are weird uh, because there's so many reskins of so many other ones. Uh, back scratcher is fine. Uh, sharpened volcano fragment is actually fine. I don't know why the damage penalty is so extreme, but it's probably just because it casts two in flames. Maybe 15%. That'd be fine. Um, it's not like Pyro ever uses melee that much anyway, but still, you know. Uh, Homewrecker slash Neon Annihilator slash. Uh, oh, wait. This, that's. Never mind. Postal Pummeler is a reskin of the Axe Extinguisher. Homewrecker is fine, Axe Extinguisher is good. Not much to say on that matter. Demo man, almost everything is good. It f this class really facilitates a, the widest versatility of play styles. You have different sticky bomb launchers. You have different shields to suit your needs. You have all these different swords. I have no comment on any of these other than that the iron bomber, I believe, and the lock and load are the ones that everyone has the. Um, problems with due to the update histories um damaged increase by 10 percent on the hatless update uh undocumented the change bonus attribute was changed from 20 percent damage done to 20 percent damage bonus oh so it's just a phrasing change uh 2012 september 4 patch Changed attribute reduced the clip size penalty from 60% to 50%. Okay. This is the lock and load, right? Yeah. Weapon functionality is unchanged. Okay. Smith Smith 2014 changes the two base grenade damage variants. Now ensure the lock and load does not exceed 124 damage on a single hit. Removed 25% damage penalty. Interesting. Changed clip size to 25% from 50 to from 50%. Okay, that's good. Uh, lock and load grenades no longer visually tumble when fired. Uh, changed. Yeah. Okay. So this one's fine. It's good. Iron bomber. Removed damage penalty on self-detonate was 10%. Huh. There was a self-detonate method on this thing? That sounds great. Reduced radius penalty from 20% to 15%. Yeah, that's fine. The iron bomber is good. 30% fuse time on grenades. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Um... I don't know. I think they're fine the way they are, but I think that they could have... I don't know. It's all good. And the swords are all good, too. The Islander is good. I don't... People say the Islander needs a nerf. I don't I don't think it does. Um, it's difficult to use, personally, when you don't know what you're doing. When you do know what you're doing, obviously, it's good. But that's anything, so... You just have to get good at that point. The, um... Nessie Nine Iron, whatever, Clydemore, or the Clive Moore, Half Satoichi, Pain Train, Scotsman Skull Cutter. They're all good. They're all good. Nothing much to say on that. Heavy has some contention because he has all these minigun options, and I, I like them. I like all of them. People say that it's annoying to have Natasha be used because it's like a slowdown of the target, but that's good because now it, it 
means you have to avoid heavy instead of using him as your damage sponge. So now you have to actually think about how you approach him. Maybe get the sniper to work on him more. So it, it's good. It's good. Who along heater? I think it's great. Um, do any of these have specific update histories that I should be aware of? Tomislav spin reduction has been reduced from 75% to 40%. Uh, spin up speed bonus, 40% to 10%. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, gun metal update. Minigun damage penalty on level 2 and 3 cent centuries slightly decreased. Level 2 century resistance changed from 20% to 15%. And level 3 changed from 22. Oh, that's, this is weird. Because I, I didn't know there was damage penalties on the d uh, buildings. Now 20% more accurate. Increased speed bonus time. Yeah, Tommy Slav is good. Brass Beast is go great. Uh, Who along heater is good. Ring of Flames, 25% damage bonus versus burning players. So you really want to be aware of where your pyro is. Uh, I think it's great. I think it's great. I don't have any complaints with these weapons. You just have to get good. Okay. S and the, his secondaries is mostly just food. He has the panic attack and family business. I love the family business, personally. Um, I don't know if there was. Again, though, I want panic attack to return to the way it was. Was there anything significant? Reduced the increased clip size from 40% to 33. Wow, it was 40% increased? That's pretty interesting. Uh, now has 15% increased attack speed. Yeah, that makes up for it. For the, the, the damage penalty, I think. Yeah, I think it works good. Melees. Melees are difficult because they're all kind of niche i don't like the gloves of running urgently because i don't like my health draining i don't like my health draining on the eviction notice either warrior spirit killing gloves of boxing and fist of steel those are good uh but for the most part heavy doesn't use his fist of steel so i i don't know engineer he's a lot of fun because all of these are good, except the Pomson, which sucks because the Pomson should function like a regular shotgun, uh, sort of. I think the projectile should fire faster. What Doesn't the Pomson have a, a update history as well? Like some stupid nerfs that didn't need to be there in the first place. The old... The old version was drain 15 uber charge at point blank and scale down to zero at 1024 hammer units. New drain 10 uber charge from zero to 512 HU and scale down to zero at 1536 hammer units. Yeah, that's fine. I just wish the projectile was faster than maybe it would be more as an incentive. Everyone has problems with the Wrangler. I don't know why. The Wrangler's fine. It's good. Short Circuit is also fine and good. It literally only works on offense and pay offense on payload game mode most effectively is when it works best because you can sit on the cart and that's fine because there are counterplays to that that you can employ if you're smart. You just have to be smart. That's the thing. Um changed attributes in the July 10, 2013 patch. Ammo cost reduced when an attack destroys a projectile. Amage, ammo cost of firing reduced to minus 18 metal. Okay. Uh, undocumented ammo cost increased to 36 metal when an attack does not destroy a projectile or hit a player. Undocumented increased firing speed by 25%. Undocumented. The short circuit's muzzle now emits a spark when fired. Undocumented. Fixed attack Arcing to nearby teammates as if they were enemies? Must be some bug fix. Uh, December 2013. Wow, there are a lot of changes that have happened on the short circuit. Attack speed up greatly. Uh, ammunition cost has been lowered to 5 metal per attack. Um, I, th I wish the primary worked better. The primary fire should work better. But it is the short circuit. 
so the alt fire really is the prioritized method and I don't see a problem with the ball because it doesn't do that much damage to begin with it just deletes your projectiles so you have to be smart about it try to outplay him use a shotgun do something else there's a lot of this get good talk that I'm using and it's just how I think about games because I don't ever see a problem with the way things function Gunslinger is a lot of fun. Eureka Effect is a lot of fun as well, although that requires a very different mentality. Uh, stock is fun. Southern Hospitality, I love Southern Hospitality. I wish that the fire damage resistance was less, like 10%, and maybe have th four seconds to bleed. Because... Five seconds of bleed is fine, but fire damage is a little niche against engineer of all classes. But, hey. Uh, maybe just 10%. Because 20% is a bit rough. The Jag, it's fine the way it is. I don't have a problem with it. I think the Jag is perfectly fine. Uh, medic. I just don't think he should have the syringe gun at all and that he should just use the Super SMG as was the original beta concept. Um, Blute Sauger is good. Crossbow is good. Overdose. I don't have the overdose, and I don't know why, because I hear good things about the weapon. Increased movement speed bonus from t to 20% from 10%, and increased damage penalty to 15% from 10%. Hmm. Huh. Okay. The overdose seems good. I think the overdose seems pretty... Pretty good. It's just a 15% damage penalty. Which makes it seem as though it's worse, but the movement speed is very interesting. So, I don't know, man. I guess I gotta get an overdose or something. Uh, I don't have a problem with the crossbow. People always whine about the crossbow, but I, I like it. Playing against it, using it, it is what it is, man. Uh, not much updates on it other than just functionality. Oh, it just says aesthetic changes. Ooh, bless me. Apologies. Uh, all the metaguns are good except the vaccinator, and that's only because the vaccinator doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I enjoy playing against it because it's so different. And it's just really weird to use. I've heard people say that if you don't know how to use it, you it, it detriments your team. It, it, it provides a great detriment to your team. But if you know how to use it, you're an unstoppable force. And that's good. That's good. I like that. It makes him even more of a target to pick, which is good for Sniper and Spy because it gives them more of a job to do than they already have. Speaking of Sniper, we have what everyone, everyone complains about, which is all the rifles and blah, blah, blah. Sniper being able to headshot is great because he's a glass cannon of a character if you know how to counterplay him right, right? I don't have a problem with any of the rifles. The classic is really difficult to use, which really makes me sad because I love using it. I, I have this very strange obsession with the classic. I think it's the best. Um... If people actually did want to, like, nerf Sniper, quote-unquote, just make every rifle function like the classic it's fine um but i don't um how do i put it the um people hating sniper is so weird dude what I hate about Sniper the most, though, is that he only has two guns, and the rest of them are backpacks that really don't need to be used. Cozy Camper is fine. Jurati is fun when you use Bushwaka. Razorback is weird. Darwin's Danger Shield is weird, but it emphasizes the fact that he is a glass cannon because Pyros can really get him if they know what they're doing, and Spies can get him if they know what they're doing, but... These shields protect him from that, and I'm not, I don't enjoy 
shields, really. I, I think the Cozy Camper is really just fine. I just wish there was another gun substitute because the Carbine, for me, is better than stock. I like mini crits. Just, just cool. All the melees are good. Are good. I don't care what anyone says about the, the Tribalman's Shiv. I like the Tribalman's Shiv. I really do. I think the Tribalman's Shiv is great. The bleed is good. And everything else is good about Sniper. I don't know what people's problem is with the Tribalman's Shiv. Spy is the one who suffers most because I always believe he should have stuck with his two gun setup that Pre Fortress 2 emphasizes, which is a revolver and a tranquilizer gun. But. Um, there's a lot of problems with his revolvers, mostly because this one really needs to be brought back to its original state. It took a lot of skill to use this thing. And by the way, if I haven't said this already, damage fall off is a really stupid concept because that's not how guns work at all. Unless there's a lot of wind. So, um... I think that the Ambassador should return to its former glory. I don't think the Latranger should have that damage penalty, but it's fine. The Enforcer should also be brought back to the way it was because it was more fun from what I've seen and heard. People whine about the, dim the Diamondback having crits all the time and stuff like that. Uh, because I can't aim, that's not a problem for me. But for people who do know how to aim, I would probably agree with the only nerf for this thing being not getting a crit when you have a um i either not getting crits when you sap buildings or just transforming crit into mini crit which is still really good because it's double damage so uh, what's the update history on the uh enforcer added to the game its attributes were 20 percent damage done 0.5 second increase in time taken to cloak that sounds substantial maybe 0.8 seconds should it be should be there but 0.5 is already pretty substantial uh changed attributes plus 20 damage bonus when undisguised and 20 minus 20 percent firing speed which is kind of where it sits right now and so i i don't know the enforcer is still fun to use but it should be brought back to the way it was, I think. Uh, knives. Oh, sorry. Uh, knives are all good. I don't have a problem with any of the knives. Stock is good. Big earners, fun. If your eternal reward is really next level to use. It feels like using the direct hit, honestly. Spicicle is uh, here and there. The recharge time on it should be decreased like just a little bit uh it takes 15 seconds um wait does it say it can regenerates in 15 seconds and by picking up ammo uh i, I think it should be decreased to 13 or maybe even 12 seconds maybe not 10 but eh. Uh, Conover's Kunai is fine. I don't have a problem with it. I've never had a problem with it. It's annoying to play against, sure, but again, let's just get good. It's just a get good moment for me. I don't have a problem playing against it. Stock is good. Dead Ringer is good. Cloak and Dagger is good. That's all I have to say about Spy's stuff. Obviously, don't use the red tape recorder for a sapper. And that's it. That's my opinion on TF2 weapons as a whole. I do not agree with the notion that all these classes have horribly unbalanced weapons. I just think that Valve has done a very poor job of maintaining a social media fan base and an actual player base. And youtubers popular youtubers certainly don't help that out much when they complain in moments of gamer rage and that complaining is actually taken seriously by the fan base and propagated through certain platforms like twitter and reddit and stuff 
and then it reaches Valve's attention and they're like, oh, well, we should change stuff like that. And then it gets changed and now people want the old one back or something. And it's like such a juggling mess. And this is why you really have to have people who work for you that actually, A, like the game and B, know what to watch and three, C, actually, watch a lot, a lot of stuff so that they can understand all the perspectives as universally as possible. Other than that, I see nothing wrong with... Eh. The vast majority of this is all just get good moments. I don't, I don't have an issue. And this is coming again from a player who's really, really, really bad at the game. So... Just get good. Please don't complain. You don't exactly do the community any credit, so... I don't know. Just grow up. 